Millennials are hugely influential among peers on social media. Millennials may not be a monolith, but they are more active on social media than any other demographic and value each other's opinion very highly. A study has revealed that the millennial age group feel under peer pressure to drink alcohol beverages when socializing and are also more likely to be pressured than other generations. Now, in 2009, at the age of 24, Sheon David Onamusi opened a multi-million Naira franchise TM Lewis um, store in Abuja whilst go undergoing his uh, um, national youth service. Awarded an honorary doctorate at the age of 33, Sherwin is best described as a result-driven maestro who is passionate about creatively using enterprise as a tool for sustainable human progress. He's a published author of two self-help books and a digital consultant. Now remember, you can join this conversation, tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Wish Your Africa One with the hashtag Waze, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 0818 0384663. Thank you so much for joining us, Sheon. <laughs> so I don't think we have uh, Sheon yet, but um, let me. Yes, please. So when I saw this research about millennials, you know, there are so many things that, I mean, the, the, the pressure is, is real. There are, there are so many things. But what came to your mind when you, when you saw the, the topic millennials and the societal pressure? <laughs> First, you know that before this topic came up, I never knew I was one. <laughs> <laughs> so you for, 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 from research, you said 1981? Yes, to, to about 1996. Okay. I think that um, net is a bit too wide. Really? Yeah. What? 81 to 96. So now it's official that we are all yeah. millennials. Yes. Mm. So the pressure to succeed is the first thing. And I think this stems from the society and it includes our parents. I can remember my father telling me that at 33 I'd already built gave me the XXX <laughs> is XXS um currency and all that. Look at you. Look at your peers. You know, he said that to me before. And now I can relate. You know, at the time, I was pressurizing myself that before I'm 30, I must do this. Before I'm 40, I am do this. I must do this. But it got to a stage, you know, I just sat down one day and I spoke to myself that everybody's destiny is different. Every, everybody's life it's going to be different. It's not going to, and it's okay not to be successful at the time. It doesn't mean, that doesn't represent what is going to happen throughout your lifetime. So I think it's okay for you not to be successful or not reach your goals. I think what is fundamental is building the blocks of a career. When, you, when you're still young, why don't you just focus acquiring knowledge, researching, doing well in your business, or if you're in your career, and just focus on that. And just try as much as possible to blot out your ears from, I'm not saying you, should be, you shouldn't be competitive, but when it becomes a pressure, then I think it becomes um For me, I think, for, so for, for, for um, cause I was having a conversation with my husband when, we, when I was on my way here, and I know that a lot of pressure actually truly comes from the foundation, you know, family. First of all, even before we even try to broaden it out there into the society, you know, yeah. And, you know, it depends on how the environment to which we were raised, you know. You know, a lot of us, we are put under that pressure to want to live up to a certain kind of expectation. So this pressure has always been there. It's always been there, but what has changed social media is technology. social media and technology. Just made it more because pronounced. now the world is like a village; it's a small village, and now we see that so you there's can see a what lot your of what is, is doing. doing. What you would not have known, known before. before, you know. Lami has gone to the UK. She lives in the UK. That's oh all I know. Goodness. I'm not. I, I don't care whether Lami is eating doing well or doing. Not. All I know is that Lami is in the UK. And she's having you know, fun. and she's having fun. You don't Look even look at know. the picture she took in the snow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but now social media has revealed a lot of things and we are seeing it that, wow, it is quite huge. And now 
we know that yes, this thing is real. You know, so for us, you know, so for us, it's um, it's actually it's actually a big deal right now, knowing that yes, I mean, this pressure is there and it has called for a lot of um, re re-engineering of our minds. You know, to now start to pick out what is important. But I think we have Shen with us. Shen, are you there? Yes, I am. Can you hear me and can you see me? Yes, yes. welcome to the show. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Yes, so um, you are quite uh, an achiever because at a very young age, you're able to, to, to get a lot of things done. And it, I'm wondering, you know, when you saw the topic on millennials and societal pressure, what came to you first? Oh, uh, I definitely thought of uh, White Benz. Uh, that definitely came to my mind um, because it does appear on Insta blog um, that a lot of people like white Mercedes Benz in uh, uh, or a lot of millennials like white Mercedes Benz. Uh, for those who don't understand, uh, it's uh, I think uh, I've been told is the signal for Yahoo Yahoo boys, right? So um, I think the first thing that really came to mind was that that it's real, it's off, it's right there, it's on. It's on social media, it's in your face. And um, like it was said earlier on, it's also uh, your parents. Your parents are putting you on the, under that same pressure as well. And there are lies as well as uh, truths that we tell ourselves. But generally, I think as human beings, we like to tell ourselves stories, right? And one of the story is that I have to be successful by the age of 30 or successful by the age of 21. And the expectations on age and all of a sudden, we put ourselves under this undue pressure. But I feel like in this generation, um, it's, it's even more like uh, prevalent. Previous generations, they struggled with that as well, right? Our parents also had their own pressure at the time. Uh, people that were listening to Kula and the Gang, and they felt like they were the hip stuff, you know? They had Walkman or they had uh, radio or they had TV and the other person doesn't have. There's always been there, but definitely it's been amplified now because of social media. So that, those are the things that came to my mind when I saw that topic. Okay, Sheung, at a point, was there any time that you felt pressurized by maybe your parents or the society at a point? Was there any of that issues? Did you have any of Oh, yes. Uh, oh, absolutely. I still get pressured. Uh, well, I still get pressured. Uh, um, especially when it's, it's more difficult when you hang around some people who are high achievers, you know, they're calling some numbers and you're like asking God why, you know, and when. Um, so I still get the pressure. My parents still uh, have expectations. But one thing is I was slightly luckier, right? I didn't grow up with my parents. So I'd always had this rebellious um, and independent spirits. So, so I, I get to shake it off more often than not. So my advice to people generally is that if, if, you, if you get that pressure, uh, because I still get it, I just shake it off um, and tell them, see, you know, everybody has different clock. Uh, I do remember, let me just say this quickly. I remember one time that I had to tell my mom off and I said, see, this woman, I would, I would disown you. If you don't take time, I will disown you. I'm married and I have kids now. I don't need you as much. <laughs> You know, but it was drastic. But I had to do that because she still has her own pressure because her friends are pressuring her. Um, they're seeing certain things. Oh, ah, you don't have boys. Ah, it's only girls you have. Ah. So, so the pressure is always there consistently because people are always moving the landmark uh, for success or what they call success, which I have a different definition of success, by the way. So maybe you should help us explain what that definition is because um, I saw one of the posts you posted on your Instagram saying there's more to life than money. You know, maybe you should help us share what your definition of success is because sometimes when we talk to millennials and we tell them that there's a lot more than just money, they don't seem to, um, to grab it. They feel like, no, you're just saying this because you two, you have, you've achieved something. People are so focused on the material and they forget that there's so much more to every human existence, you know, than just material. And I think that's what is putting a lot of us under that pressure to do so many things that we would not have done, you know, on a normal Uwa, day. Uwa. In addition to that, Shion, do you think there's a direct link between an achievement, between achievements and age? 
do you think there's anything is there a nexus okay so um two things let's let's go back and talk about uh success before i answer that second question um, the first question around defining success. Uh, my answer and my definition to success will probably help with the second one as well. I have um, been able to study a number of people um, who are high achievers, you know, from billionaires to millionaires uh, to thousand years in pounds as well as in Naira. And one of the things I find common in them is that they don't really know how to define success. Because the truth is, we are never told what success is. What we are told is the attributes of success or the benefits of success. So that's why we are always trying to chase the benefits rather than success itself. Let me explain. When I look at, when I look at uh, success, this is the way I dis define it. I say success has less to do with achievements, i.e. money, i.e. I achieved X at this particular age i.e. I got married, I have kids, all those things, it has less to do with achievements and it has more to do with fulfillment. And that was my definition because most people who have achieved a few of those things that I've explained, right, a number of them, when I sit down with them and we have this discussion, I found out that they're not, actually not fulfilled. Yes, they have the money, they have the car, they have all those stuff, but they're not fulfilled. Hence why a billionaire commits suicides just as much as a rich man, as a poor man does. In fact, statistics shows that rich people are more likely to commit suicide during crises like this than poor people are. Because the problem is that most of the time, um, when you've achieved something, the rich man is thinking of actually maintaining his wealth or growing his wealth. The, the threat of inflation is more real to the rich man than it is to the poor man. So in essence, it's not so much about what you achieve, it's about how fulfilled you are. So if you are not married at a particular age, but you feel fulfilled, you are successful at being single. That's what you are. You are successful at being single. And maybe your pursuit should be finding out how to be successful as a single person first before going to get married because in my experience um to keep my traction at the age of 24 to do tm lewing at the age of 30 uh to have published two books at 33 get an honorary doctorate degree from a university here one thing i found is that the motion from one success always affects the other so if you have the right definition in the first place if your point of view is about fulfillment then the rest of those things that you achieve, regardless of what age it comes, you would always feel fulfilled. And I, my personal testimony, personally, when I talk about my exploits, my uh, TM Lewin in Abuja, for example, it's not that I made money, which I did make money. My testimony was that uh, there was one young Nigerian who had not been given opportunity to work somewhere. He had been going from different places looking for jobs. And I gave him the best three and a half years of his life. That, to me, is my um, sort of ticket to being successful in that exploit, not the money I made. The money I enjoyed. Money is made to be enjoyed. Those things are meant to be enjoyed. They're not meant to define us. And the problem is we've allowed it to define us rather than enjoy them. Wow. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Okay, Sean, do you think, because I've heard a lot of things bandied around about negative things, particularly about millennials, how entitled we are, lazy, unrealistic expectations and all that. Do you actually think this is true? The labels, I, I, do you think they are true? I, I think it's a lie. I think it's a lie. Millennials are one of the most creative set of people. Millennials have the ability to um, look for solutions where ordinarily it's not glaring there that there's solution. I mean, look at how uh, millennials have brought Nigeria or taken Nigeria and put us on the map when it comes to music through their creativity, right? Forget the fact that the messaging in some of their music is not uh, appropriate, but generally through their use of creativity, they've brought us in the limelight in ways that all our politicians have never been able to do for years. 
you know, upon all the conferences they go, they've not been able to make that difference. They've not been able to paint us in at least some shade of good light compared to these creative millennials who are doing entertainment. So uh, I think millennials are very creative. They're very smart. Um, the problem, though, is that I think we get crippled by our thinking more than anything. Absolutely. What do I mean? We get crippled by our thinking because we are juggling a lot of questions, unanswered questions in our minds. And that makes us uh, very prone to um, coming across lazy, relaxed, because, you know, we're trying to find answers to the problems, but we're not getting answers. And that's a problem that we generally have, right? We would not find answers except we go out and do stuff. So that's our folly. I mean, that's our pitfall as millennials. But generally, we are not lazy. We're not all those things that they paint us to be. Okay, so I think uh, we'll take a short break. We'll still have um, Shemun with us. Olayinka Ogunfemi will join us. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.